Well, welcome to our first National Family History Talk. I'd like to, oh well I suppose I better introduce, oh hello, welcome, come in. Um, introduce myself, I'll be here um, for all the talks so you'll get sick of seeing me. <laughs> I'm Sandra and I'm the Senior Library Technician for the State Library and Archive Service. Um, we have Ali here who, who also is with the State Library and Archive Service. And as you can see, I won't introduce her talk because she, she can talk about that. I was just going to um, let you know about the reading room and the history room. They are still open. We are open for family history, so please come and see us up there. Um, we also will have the talks on uh, YouTube. That's why Clifford, us, I'll introduce you. Clifford. He's going to be here every day as well and he's going to film the talk. So if you miss something writing and you think, you know, oh, I wish I'd written that down, um, you can look on our Library Tasmania YouTube and we will put the talks up. And they're going to, we thought, with the, you know, the COVID, and people not being able to come out, and people, we've had a person in Melbourne wanted to come to the talk, and we yeah. said, no, no, <laughs> <laughs> you are not coming, well, she didn't with it. And then we said to her, no, you can watch it on, on the film, so she said, I'm very happy with that. Um, we will be doing radio interviews, and we've got blogs coming out, we've got Instagrams coming out, so all these things, SoundCloud, so all these wonderful, new words that I haven't heard before, but they are getting words that anyone now recognises, um, so have a look. So I was just going to say the National Family History Month, of course, is in August. Um, you know, we do have a big collection. Our names index is now, has over one million items and growing. Our people down the back of it, they um, jest, is involved in, in a lot of Digivolve, which um, is a, a dress you want a little bit of what we do for Digivolve. Digivolve. <laughs> We're, um, which grows out. So if you look, say, you looked, say, six months ago and you thought, oh, that's all, have a look all the time because there's new information going up all the time in the Names Index. So always keep checking. Um, and I think I want to hand over to Ali. <laughs> and what we thought was any questions, we'll have time after. And as well, if you don't want to talk as a group, Ali is going to stay um, for individuals to talk as well. So I'm going to hand, up, hand over to Ali. Thank you. Well, good afternoon and many thanks for the opportunity to speak to you today. Um, as Sandra mentioned, my name is Ali and I'm an archivist here in the State Library and Archive Service within the Library of Tasmania. Now firstly, we acknowledge the Tasmanian Aboriginal people as the traditional custodians of this land and we pay our respects to the Elders past, present and future who hold the memories, traditions, culture and hope of Tasmania's first people. Libraries Tasmania also pays respect to the resilience and strength of the Tasmanian Aboriginal people and extends that respect to all First Australian peoples. Hanging on the wall in my family home in Perth, Western Australia, is a painting that although it is quite plain and without people or actions depicted within it, is extremely significant to my family. It was in this building that my mother spent her entire childhood. For a variety of family reasons, my mum was sent down to Fremantle from Sawara in modern Malaysia at the age of three and a half. Having spent time first at St Vincent's family home in Perth, she was then placed at St Joseph's Convent in Fremantle, which was a boarding school, a convent boarding school. And she was to stay here until she was 16 years old. We have few photographs of my mother as a child and no childhood possessions. There are no treasured books or clothes Indeed, even the convent itself was demolished in August 1968. We may not have any childhood items, but we do have this painting and all that it represents for my mother and for my family. My mum commissioned this painting be made from a photograph found in a newspaper during research at the National Library in Canberra. This picture evokes both happy and sad memories. My mum sometimes reminisces and reflects upon the layout of the building 
the location of the parlour and the dormitory where she slept. She remembers friends and teachers. This painting reminds us of an important part of, my, of our family past and is strongly entwined with and connected to my family's senses of identity. I start with this story today for several reasons. Firstly, to really illustrate the great range of different childhood stories that everyone brings here today. Your story or your family's story might involve many different sorts of care for children. It might involve having a first family and an adopted family. It might involve, li involve living with other children in out of care home or short periods of time in foster care or boarding arrangements. These different sorts of care were experienced by many people and families and more than anything, I would like you to walk away from this talk with the knowledge that while your family experiences are unique, you are not alone. Where once these sorts of childhood experiences and forms of care were not really spoken about, this is changing. The State Library and Archive Service of Libraries Tasmania has and is continuing to develop a range of resources and ways to help you document this aspect of your childhood or family history. I also tell this story of my family painting because I want to make the point that in addition to various formal state documents and welfare files that I will discuss with you, Libraries Tasmania holds numerous other resources like photographs, care home annual reports and newspapers. These sources can easily be overlooked when researching adoptions, fostering and out of home care, home, out of home care. but these resources can have great impact and significance. These items tell a story. Moreover, photographs and other items, as I will explain in a moment, can complement the more formal records produced by state welfare services, providing context and insight into different aspects of life as a child. My talk here today is aimed at anyone who is researching adoptions, fostering and out-of-home care, whether it be their own experiences or that of a family member in the past. In this talk here today, I'm going to do several things. I'm going to describe I'm going to describe the processes involved in researching adoptions, fostering and out-of-home care, which can be tricky because you have to deal with documents that have restricted access and privacy concerns. I will identify and describe some of the main open state welfare record series that can be used to research adoptions, fostering and out-of-home care. But also, and with my family painting in mind, I will explore a range of other sources and avenues for you to pursue that are held within the Library's Tasmanian collection. I will then provide an overview of the services that Libraries Tasmania will help you with, um, offers you to help find information about your past or your family past, and details some useful contacts and support services that are available from other organisations. Now, while this may seem like an awful lot that I'm going to cover, don't panic because, because we have, um, well, this is actually also being recorded as well, but we also have an online guide to records uh, that's available on the Libraries Tasmania website that you can look back on. I will refer to this guide on several occasions, but please note that this guide covers the core elements of this talk. So what I'd like to do firstly is to start by explaining some of the terms that I'll be using here today, especially the terms adoptions, fostering and out-of-home care, and very briefly to consider how these forms of care developed within Tasmanian contexts. I'll start with out-of-home care which is the term used to describe the care of children in places other than family or private homes. This sort of care is what we used to refer to as institutional or residential care, children homes and orphanages that housed and looked after multiple children at the same time. In Tasmania, this form of care has a long history. The King's Orphan School, later called the Queen's Asylum for Destitute Children, was founded in 1828 and by the mid-1860s was responsible for the care of over 500 children. Other homes too were founded, notably in Hobart and Launceston, including the Girls' Industrial School in Launceston in 1877. Largely run by, um, by church groups, benevolent, benevolent societies and um, charity organisations, these homes received funding from a variety of sources, but primarily through philanthropy and from the state government. These homes were primarily independent and managed by volunteers with state supervision. Some of the earlier out-of-home care homes evolved, some merged or moved and were renamed. 
For instance, the boys' home, which is located in West Hobart, was founded in 1869, and this was later be, um, to be known as Kenmore's Boys' Home. You might find when researching out of home care that you come across various names for these homes. For instance, you might come across reference to an industrial school, and these homes were meant to help educate and train poor youngsters in a variety of work skills. Training schools, such as the Boys Training School in Hobart, appeared in 1869 and focused on reforming juvenile offenders. The Boys Training School in Hobart moved to Deloraine in 1922 and was renamed the Ashley Home, um, Ashley Home for Boys. Now, although this form of care continued to exist in um, parallel with other sorts of care, like foster care that I will look at in just a moment, there were times when out-of-home care was the favoured form of care for children and other times when it was not in favour. After World War II in Tasmania, out-of-home care was the preferred means of care that saw the creation of numerous new homes, including Wybra Hall in Mangalore, which opened in 1955, and Malmesbury Girls' Home in um, 1950. When child migrants arrived in Tasmania from the United Kingdom in Malta after World War II, the Welfare Department's policy was to place these children in care homes, like Clarendon, uh, Clarendon's children home in Kingston, rather than to place them with adopted families. Now, care leavers is the term used to refer to individuals who lived in out-of-care um, homes or in foster care as children. From the year 1873, fostering increasingly became the preferred method of care uh, for children in Tasmania. Sometimes called boarding out, uh, foster care involved the short-term care of children within private homes, however care could also be made um, be in out-of-home care places too. In Tasmania, fostering was managed by a central committee of volunteers stationed all over the state who were responsible for visiting boarded out children monthly in their foster homes and reporting as to the child's, wealth, um, child's health and welfare. And this is just an example from our library catalogue. This is um, one of the series from the Central Committee for Boarding Out Destitute Children, um, which I'll look at in more detail in just a moment. It's a screenshot from the Library Tasmania catalogue. Um, and uh, so foster cares, uh, foster parents, I should say, had to be registered with the State Department, um, which you can actually see yeah, under the series here. Uh, these, the one um, uh, SWD 44, which is second from the bottom, just here, is actually the register that we have in the archive of the um, the register of applicants for individuals to become foster cares carers. From 1896, the Tasmanian government um, was to become much more heavily involved in the care of children. While there was always relief provided to families who needed it by the state government under various departments, welfare had been primarily distributed by those who needed it by the children's homes and all the hospitals. The Youth Youthful Offenders, Destitute and Neglected Children's Act of 1896 led to the creation of the Neglected Child's Children's Department and it's really from this time that the detailed welfare records begin. It is in 1896 too that the term ward of the state is first used in Tasmania to describe a child who was under the care of the state. And this term, ward of the state, was used right up to 1997. Unlike fostering and boarding out, adoption referred to the care of um, the care of sorry, referred to care in a family situation that was more permanent. The children looked, I'm sorry, the parents took over responsibility of the child and became the child's legal guardian. In 1920, the Adoption of Children Act was created to centralise and legally regulate adoptions. Before this time, adoptions were conducted through private means, often between families, friends and neighbours that were known to each other. Doctors too could act as go-betweens between pregnant mothers and prospective adoptive parents. Adoptions prior to 1920 could be described as loose at best. Unlike foster parents, adoptive parents did not receive financial support, and so children were sometimes taken, from home, taken home for a trial and then returned to the State Department if not deemed fit enough for adoption. Sometimes an, um, advertisements were placed in the newspapers as well. 
So researching adoptions prior to 1920 is extremely difficult, particularly if the child did not um, come in contact with the State Welfare Department. There are unfortunately very limited extra records that you can draw upon to research these adoptions. Now what is apparent from um, this discussion is uh, that children have been cared for in Tasmania in a variety of ways. This may have been um, as a ward of the state, they may have lived in a home run by a church, or have been adopted through private arrangements with extended family members. And it is possible that children may have been cared for in all three ways at different times in their lives. The sorts of available records and means of ex um, access accessing them differ between sorts of care provided. In general, we can separate the records into two very broad categories, state records and non-state records. State records were created by government departments and include records of ward of the state, adoptions, custody, child protection and welfare. It also includes child, um, sorry, school, sorry, includes school and healthcare records. Non-state records were produced by private institutions such as churches and community care groups and private hair care homes. They include family memoirs and photographs. It is important to remember that welfare records for an individual are not collated together in one file under one name. There might be three or four separate files depending on where the child lived, how they were cared for, whether they moved from the north to the south of the state, and it is likely that record files might exist in both state and non-state collections, and that even within these collections there might be several different files in different series. So how then do you access state records? If your research includes historical welfare records, and by that I mean uh, ones that were created more than 75 years ago, then start by searching the Library's Tasmanian catalogue using the name of the individual. So for instance, I search for records for John Smith by typing his name into our search bar. I then um, I searched using, I actually limited this to using two different methods. First of all, I use the names index, which you can see is a tab in grey up the top there. Um, and in doing so, the, uh, the name John Smith brings up 4,372 results in our names index. I then limited my search by using the left hand menu, which is where that red arrow is. You press that view all, it gives you more options. And that gives me the option of choosing health and welfare, which I then selected to narrow, um, narrow down my perimeters. And the result then from that narrowing is that it brings up 58 results, all to do with uh, John Smith, different John Smiths obviously, from different years, but is limited significantly from that initial massive figure. So it's up to me then to then go through each one of those records and to find the correct person um, that, is, uh, that I'm looking for, the correct John Smith. However, secondly, it is important that you also search the library catalogue using the name of the individual, for instance John Smith, but this time using the Tasmanian Archives tab, which is, near, which is next to the Names Index tab at the very top there. This will bring up other resources that are not in the libraries, uh, not in our names index, including the two main social welfare series, um, SWD1 and AA226. So this is just a screenshot of SWD1 in our library catalogue. So SWD1, um, which is correspondence relating to the custody and welfare of children under various acts, covers the years from 1897 to 1954. These are case files for children brought to the attention of the state. These files comprise correspondence associated with the provision of care for children. And we have many thousands of these records. The second series that I'd like to highlight is the AA226 General Welfare Case Files. This series contains applications and correspondence relating to the custody and welfare of children child migration and the provision of compassionate allowances and outdoor relief to individuals and families. And this series covers the years from 1915 to 1994. Now both of these series are catalogued according to the individual or child's name, so you can search for them within that Tasmanian Archives tab and it should bring up a result for you. So what to expect in these two series? So open SWD1 files and the AA226 
G6 files contain numerous uh, administrative correspondence to do with the care of the child or sometimes the children of the family. These files could contain within them details of the movement of the child between different forms of care or between out of care homes, reports written by the police who visited the family or, um, or by doctors, letters written by carers and family members and sometimes very rarely by the child themselves and various out-of-home care information, including reports of behaviour. It is very tricky to know what to expect in these open files. However, it is important to bear in mind that these are government-created administrative documents that more often than not were not written from the perspective of the child. Moreover, it is important to bear in mind when reading these documents that sometimes, depending on the era in which these documents were produced, that you may encounter language and descriptions of people that are really not appropriate. These are an unfortunate product of the times. It was not uncommon for terms such as imbecile, feebly minded, to be used in welfare files of the of early 1900s in Australia. These files were written for administrative purposes um, and not created with individuals and families in mind at all. So the language used in these documents can be judgmental and offensive presenting a negative image of families who found themselves in tough financial and life situations. So one archive series which consistently uses difficult language and descriptions of people is the Mental Deficiency Book. This is a, um, a reference in our, in our catalogue. These records often include psychological tests given to the child. Files for these children also exist in SWD, one series. So the Mental Deficiency Board ran between 1922 and 1964 and was responsible for the care of children who were considered, and I quote, feebly minded, or the children of, and I quote, feebly minded parents. These, um, of course, are terms that are nothing short of appalling and they refer to people who had a range of intellectual disabilities and acquired head injuries that today we have much greater understanding of and appropriate language to describe. Now these two main series, SWD1 and AA226, are just two of many listed in our library catalogue that are held by the Tasmanian Archives. To find the full range of records, you can browse the library catalogue as items are all listed under the various government department entries. So in other words, our catalogue is structured to reflect the various state departments that were responsible for the care of children over the years. Now, the names of the state government welfare departments changed considerably, and this is just a bit of an overview of uh, what they were called, the various names of them. Um, and the TA in the site at the very end there refers to the, um, the agency number within our library catalogue. Now, I stopped in 1993. I could have added about another four or five different levels there. Um, I, won't, I didn't continue it up to the present day, but eventually you get to the current Department of Communities and the current Department of Health. So if you are interested in looking at what records were created between 1819 and, uh, 19, sorry, 1918 and 1936, just as an example, by the children of the State Department, which you can see the dates there, um, which you call the agency, um, then you can put that into our library catalogue and you will find the children of the State Department. The agency name is located at the top there. And then uh, at the bottom there, you've got the series including the SWD1 correspondence ones that I mentioned a minute ago. So you can have a browse and see which series were created by the various agencies. And this can be really very useful in providing an overview of the sorts of documents that there are around. So then if uh, I was to then zoom in on the top one there of the um, series created, the SWD1, then I would bring up the uh, resources that um, and the digitised um, items that are available within SWD1 there. So the catalogue is extremely useful um, in showing uh, many different things. So it will show, for instance, how uh, this is back just at the top level now, the agency level. It will describe for you the previous and the subsequent agencies, so you can move very freely between how a government department evolved over time, and then also can point you out where, what related agencies too that might provide similar forms of um, information. So that's the main um, way of uh, looking at um, the 
various different uh, records. However, if you do not find any records um, after searching for an individual's name in the library's Tasmania catalogue, and you know this individual was in care, then what you can do is re um, submit a request to us at the State Library and Archive Service for further research. This is a free service that we offer that allows for up to one hour of free research to be undertaken. And what we can do is search for open records to see if there was one there that perhaps didn't appear in the library catalogue. And I'll speak about this service more in a moment. But what um, you can find a link to the form um, in the Get Help section, and I've highlighted that there in red, if your question requires research, use this form to seek help, and that will take you to an online form that you can fill in and ask a question about um, uh, someone who you're researching. However, another reason for not locating re uh, records is that the records are actually closed. Many state records on welfare um, and care are restricted access, most commonly for 75 years, calculated from the most recent date of their, um, that was recorded in the file. This is to ensure that sensitive personal and medical information requires, um, remains private. So you can see that in our catalogue, um, that's, uh, it's got the restricted access there, agency access, only 75 years. So for example, this series here, the AA226 series, covers the period from March 1915 to November 1994. However, this series, um, which it says there, is classified as D75, which means that not all of the files within this series are open. So the 75 is restricted access. So access to these closed items can only be done through the responsible, um, uh, responsible government agency, which in the case of this series, as it is with all welfare series, is the Department of Communities. And I'll provide their contact details for you in just a moment. In Tasmania, access to closed records are governed by the Personal Information Protection Act of 2004 and applications are done through a Personal Information Protection form or a PIP form. So while the Tasmanian Archives is the starting point to finding out about your childhood story or your family story, in the case of more recent records, we will need to refer you to another government agency to get access to closed state records. This government agency will assess your application to see closed records and will then search and request items on your behalf and may then provide access to these records for you. So to access um, welfare, closed welfare and um, water the state files, you need to contact the Department of Communities, sorry that's an absolute appalling cover there, um, and complete a PIP form. An online PIP form is available um, through, uh, through them and, and there's some contact details. For adoptions, it is important to note that um, all adoption records are actually permanently closed. And so for this, you will need to contact the Adoption Information Service to uh, discuss the process and to find out if you are eligible, because only certain people under the Adoptions Act of 1988 can access information um, on adoptions. There's their contact details there. So let's now turn to non-state records and particularly to out-of-home care records. As I mentioned earlier, uh, many care homes in Tasmania were privately run, often by religious institutions and community groups. Children in non-state non care homes may have been placed in these homes by family, and in these cases, a government welfare or ward of the state file may not exist. However, some children were placed in these non-state care homes as wards of the state, and in this instance, a child a welfare file may well exist, and you'll need to follow the path that I've provided above by either researching in the Tasmanian archives for open records, or contacting the Department of Communities for closed records. The Tasmanian archives holds only a very small number of non-state care home administrative records. Care home administrative records uh, that we do hold include uh, one which is the Bethany Boys Home, which was down in Dover. Um, in 1973, 1947 to 1957, and they moved over to Minnesota in 1957 to 1978. We hold their admission register, then we also have a visitor's book, and these two items are open. Kennelly's Boys Home as well, uh, although this is a very early one, uh, we have their admission register, uh, there's records of education, supervisors monthly reports are just some of the examples of ones that we have for this one. You'll notice that the, um, the numbers there, you've got NG, um, and also
also some of the numbers there at NS. These ones refer to non-state and non-government. So it's how you know that they are non, um, not produced by the, the state, that they're rather private ones. So Libraries Tasmania is currently working on records from the Kenley's Boys Home, and these records will have greater accessibility soon. Now, most of these, um, actually, I'm sorry, I said that those uh, registers were open. They're not, actually. They're, they have a restricted access of 75 years. But if you lived at this home, um, then uh, you can gain um, access to this by applying to us at the Tasmanian Archives. So if you were cared for in a non-state care home or orphanage and have been unable to find records in the Tasmanian Archives collection, you will need to contact the church or private institutions, research support services to gain access to your records. To find out which research support services to go to, we recommend that you consult the Find and Connect website. Find and Connect is a web resource that brings together historical resources relating to institutional care in Australia. And it's a really fabulous and thorough resource that they're updating all the time. Find and Connect have a comprehensive list of children's homes in Tasmania, as well as guides, record holdings, contact details, and um, photographs. So this is just an example of the page from Find and Connect for the Clarendon Children's Home, which was down in Kingston. So um, you can see from this, they provide a lot of historical information. They also, there's a tab there that you can click on. You can click on the records, and they provide a list of the various records and the research services that um, you consult to uh, see these records. They also have lots of photographs um, as, uh, and very useful. So non-state care home resources. So we are really uh, in a very unique position here in Tasmania as our archives and state library collections are housed within the same institution. And there are many, many advantages to this um, because you can uh, view relevant books and archives in the same session, but also it means that the staff here are across a whole range of material um, to help you. The Tasmanian Archives and the Tasmanian Library Collection holds numerous items of significance for non-state care homes. This includes annual reports, newsletters, minutes, meetings, manuals, photographs, and sometimes film, film, footage, uh, sorry, film footage of homes. For example, the Clarendon Children's Home had several locations, including at Kingston Beach from 1945 to 2004. Now, the Tasmanian Archives does not hold the records of admission or any other administrative files from this house because they have been retained by the Anglican Church and the Clarendon Children's Home Incorporated. Now, well, we do hold numerous other items of significance, including this photograph, and we have annual reports. Uh, we hold the annual reports from 1950 to 2004. These reports include unnamed group uh, photographs, snippets of information on daily life. We also hold general files of the Clarendon's Children's Home, Hospital and Medical Services Division. Uh, this includes correspondence to and from ministers and hospital administration staff, mostly around medical checks and support, requests for medicine and surgical supplies. However, no children's names are included. We have lots of pamphlets from this home, from the children, Clarendon's Children's Home, including one called Blessing and Opening of the Administrative Offices, another one called Give a Child a Chance, Project Cottage Care from 1976. We also have in the Libraries Tasmania collection uh, the history of Clarendon, written by Geoffrey Stevens, called Clarendon, A Century of Care. And this book is a history of the children's home that discusses policies, leadership and innovation, and of particular interest are the chapters that discuss um, they have photos of children, um, most are identified by their first name, as well as interior photos of the rooms and beds, and also discusses day-to-day uh, -day running of the home. And the last thing that I'll bring to your attention from the Clarendon's home is actually a film that we have called Rhythm of the Rails, which a film um, just so happens to have moving footage um, outside of the Clarendon building with children playing. So for care leavers and pamphlets, um, these items, sorry, for care leavers, these pamphlets and items take on a greater meaning. They are not just sources of information, but are also important objects in themselves with value and significance. And this was something that came out of the various royal commissions that considered the treatment of out-of-home care children, which highlighted the great absence of material items and mementos from children who um, have were in um, 
yeah, that um, out of home care um, children experience. I heard recently um, a, sp a talk by Frank Golding, Vice President of the Care Leavers Australia Network, who commented on this great desire that care leavers have for, and I quote, the things that families hold on to, like school memorabilia, birth, deaths and marriage records, school reports and school photos, baptism records and drawings, for favourite childhood books and families uh, that families keep, and for stories passed down between, um, between families. So what this really highlights is the importance of these records um, and the pamphlets and other things have information on, um, for care leavers and the role that archives have in helping to find mementos, moments of childhood and snippets of daily life. In the Library of Tasmania Collection we have a range of written resources uh, written by care leavers themselves. Many care, care leavers have found that sharing their experiences and writing about the process of discovering information about their family history and their experiences can go some way towards healing and feelings of empowerment that perhaps they did not feel when they were a child in care. These resources are invaluable, offering insight into the life of a child as a care, adoption and fostering. Uh, we have some uh, in our collection, and these are just the covers of them here, um, that are specifically related to Tasmanian childhood experiences. So the one on the left there, Judy um, Armford, not named from adoption to de-adoption, this is a personal memoir of childhood which brings, uh, in which Judy discusses her relationship with her adoptive parents. She discusses birth documents and the importance of name and naming practices and uh, how to revise um, archive records. The one in the middle there um, is uh, the set of my mother's kiss. And this is a personal uh, journey of discovery about the parentage of um, Merlene's parentage, her memoirs, uh, her memories of adoption and orphanages growing up in Launceston and also Sandy Bay. And the last one I've included here is uh, by Chaz um, Candon, Memories of Ashley's Boys Home on the Ramblings. And this book here includes memories of growing up at Ashley Boys Home in the 1930s and 40s. It also contains photographs and short stories written by the author. We also have a range of books in our collection that are more Australian focused, um, and here are just two here. So Libraries Tasmania has numerous resources to help you find and locate more information about your childhood or place of care, and to help piece together a bigger picture to put your experiences in context. Broadly, um, I will categorise these um, resources within uh, family history records, school records and resources, uh, sorry, yes, resources that evoke memories and places. So firstly then, turning to family history records. If you have memories or knowledge of family, or you have received information through the PIP process, you might have a range of questions about your family history that you would like to research. We offer numerous guides to records, the Libraries Tasmania webpage to help you find your family history records. And this is just a screenshot of the full range of uh, the, um, the guides to records that we have, including the one at the very top there, which is the Adoptions, Fostering and Out of Home Care Guide. Of particular interest, uh, for those of you researching um, Adoptions, Fostering and Out of Home Care, are uh, the ones on um, birth, deaths and marriage registration, um, we also have guides on church registrations for baptisms, weddings and burials, um, and we also have cemetery record guides. So these guides are an excellent starting point for family history research, pointing to the main series, books and other resources of interest. And in this section of the talk, I'll highlight some of the most useful of our guides to records for researching adoptions, fostering and out of home care, and we'll point out um, several particularly useful series and resources. So newspaper collections, Tasmania, uh, Libraries Tasmania has a fabulous collection of historic and more recent newspapers. If you are receiving, researching adoption that occurred in the past prior to 1920, that you may, you know, you may like to have a look at these um, the newspaper, newspapers and classified sections where the um, advertisements sometimes appeared for adoptions. Newspapers are also useful for birth notices, death and funeral notices. And Trove, the uh, National Library of Australia's digitised newspapers, is also an invaluable research resource for Australian newspapers prior to 1953. And in Trove, you can search using uh, keywords, which is very useful. So hospital birth records. Many 
hospital and health records are restricted. However, there are some records in the Tasmanian archives that are open. For instance, the following hospital records are to do with maternity and are actually open, and that includes records from the Queen Alexandra Hospital for Women, which ran um, in Hobart from 1905 to 1980. There are various resources here, including admission, admission registers, uh, there's some patient charts with details of birth, there's antenatal record cards, um, and various other daily reports and admissions as well. Other open records includes the Hobart, Royal, uh, Royal Hobart Hospital, uh, which operated from 1920 to today. And there's two examples there of open records that you might uh, find uh, very useful for your research. And also uh, one from the Bernie General Hospital um, up, up north as well, which operated from 1918. So the sorts of information that you'll find in these um, hospital admission registers, for instance, include the name of the patient, the date of their admission, the date of discharge, and in some instances of their death, the number of days spent in hospital and the fees paid. So these can be quite useful. So baptism record records. The Tasmanian Archives holds many different baptism records as well. Um, and we have a uh, guide to records here that can um, point you in the right direction here. So open records, for instance, with baptisms include RGD 32, Registers of Baptism in Tasmania, which covers the years from 1803 to 1933. Another thing that you might be interested in is finding out where someone lived. So Libraries Tasmania has a range of resources to help you locate where someone might have lived in the past. We have electoral rolls and telephone directories, for instance, and you'll find these listed in our guides on where someone lived in Tasmania. So school records then. Um, to help you find out about your schooling or the schooling of a relative, we have a very useful guide to records on schooling as well. Um, and here you might find links to photographs and school administration. Uh, if you search the Libraries Tasmania catalogue for your school, then you may be able to locate um, annual reports, admission, admission registers and other records of interest. School records have a range of different access restrictions, many of which are 25 years, but some are longer depending on which sort of record that it is. So for access to more recent school records, you'll need to contact the Department of Education and complete one of those PIP forms with them. Here's the details for them. However, many schools have very close links with particular uh, children's out-of-home care institutions. For instance, two schools um, were very closely connected to the Launceston Girls' Home, including the Glen Dew Primary School and the Charles Street Primary School. And both of the, uh, the admission registers uh, for these schools are open. We also have a range of registers and um, admissions for specialist schools around Tasmania, including the School for the Blind and the Deaf, and also the School for the Blind. And I listed those there for the two. So turning then to resources in the Libraries Tasmania collection that evoke memories. Walking tracks, playgrounds, schools and parks in the area surrounding a place of care or family home are full of memories and resonate with people's senses of identity. In our Libraries collection we hold many local historical studies, historical photographs, maps and plans that can help you research a particular place. These resources can also help contextualise and form narratives around the records that you may have received by the PIP reform process. So photographs have been particularly recognised as um, has been, rec have re been recognised as particularly important for care leavers. And I started this talk by speaking about a painting of a photograph that's a great significance for my family. Photographs can hold and prompt memories and reminiscing. Photographs too can provide confidence and clarity to fuzzy memories. The Libraries Tasmania collection have a number of photographs of the exterior and grounds of various care homes, as well as of named children and staff. We, um, for instance, this one here, which is quite kind of cool. We have uh, selections of undigitised photographs as well, so some of the Northern Tasmanian uh, boys' home. Uh, we also have photographs of, um, for instance, um, uh, uh, children at Winfield, unnamed children at Winfield Home, which operated in Newtown between 1838 and 1971. And this home provided residential care for children with a range of different needs and looked after children with polio or cerebral palsy, for instance. So these photographs are all important. 
So how then can we help you? Um, so I'd like to uh, wrap up this talk really by talking about arguably one of the most important pieces of information and this is how we at the State Library and Archive Service can help you and also highlight some of the main support networks for care leaders. The State Library and Archive Service offers a range of different research services and throughout this talk I've highlighted the numerous guides to records that contain information and guidance on what records to use. A range of guide, uh, guides to records, a new range of guides to records have been completed, including fostering an out-of-home care guide that I mentioned a moment ago. So if you live in Hobart, feel free to uh, visit us in the reading room or history room on the second floor of the State Library um, of Tasmania, where staff can assist you locate a range of archival items and histories and provide general family history research services. However, please be aware that at the moment we are undergoing some important building maintenance in the reading room and are a bit restricted as to what we can do. To view items in the history room, so if there's something that you have found that you'd like to view, then you can book a session through Eventbrite um, and order your material in advance. So what I've got up there is our help page from the Library of Tasmania. You can see at the top how to book a history room session and a list of all the things that we can help you with there. If you'd like to speak to someone on the telephone, then you can reach us um, on a couple of numbers that we have here between 9.30 and 5 p.m. Monday to Friday. And importantly, I think also in the context of this talk, you can also chat with us. And you can see on the chat, uh, there's a chat box on the right there of the Libraries Tasmania webpage under Get Help. So if you wanted to chat, you can find a librarian or archivist um, in the chat service there to assist you. And important in the context of this, um, this uh, topic is that you can remain anonymous for this service, so you can ask a question and you don't have to write your name, that's absolutely fine. Um, and this service is available between 9.30 and 5, Monday to Friday. Now if your question requires a little bit more research or has some challenging questions, then you can fill in an online form with your research questions. And this is the form that you can use if you're not finding any welfare files that you're expecting to find in, your, in the catalogue um, that you believe should be there. And the, um, I pointed it out before, there's a form, I think you will, um, if, this if this, your question requires research, you use this form to seek help. And that's an online form that will then go to our archivists and librarians who can research on your behalf. Now, there are numerous support groups who can help you with your research and provide support and um, guidance and also counselling. And there are two main support services. The first one is that Find and Connect offer a support cell, um, service. Find and Connect helps forgotten Australians and former child migrants trace their history and understand the reason why they're placed into care, reconnect with family where possible and to access counselling and other supports. The second one listed there is Care Leavers Australia Network. This group supports people who have grown up in orphanages, children's home commissions and foster care in Australia and New Zealand and whose parents um, or whose parents or other family members um, have had this experience as well. And those are their, those are their details there. So I'll, um, I'll finish there and I'll open the floor uh, for any questions that people would have um, about anything that I've spoken uh, about today. into these talks I thank every each and every one that comes. I hope we see some familiar faces tomorrow. We have our national um, archives, John, he's going to do a talk and then he's going to do a tour of the National Archives here here in the building. So um, feel free to come every day, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, two to three. Thank you very much everyone.